Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Richard and I am the Bull Rider. Today I'm going to show you how to change out the rear differential and transmission fluid in your Lamborghini Gallardo. This procedure is super easy and if you have any sort of clunkiness or erratic behavior when it comes to driving, especially when it comes to tight turning, it feels more of a, like a pickup truck than it does a Lamborghini, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to change out the fluid and it's going to totally transform the way your car handles and drives. And this sort of clunkiness is normal. So I really recommend that you change out this fluid every 10,000 miles if you get this sort of erratic behavior back again. And with extended service intervals, you'll notice a lot more clunkiness coming from the transmission. And the first thing we're really going to want to do is not even look at the service manual whatsoever. To be honest with you, they don't even correctly list the correct fill ports and drain ports for this transmission. And it's going to be something that we're going to want to avoid entirely. So let's avoid the confusion on that and I'll show you exactly what bolts you need to remove to correctly fill and drain the transmission for the Lamborghini Gallardo. In a previous video that I linked in the card above, I also went over everything that you need to know regarding the Graziano six-speed manual transmission and the fluid that you need to put into it. And if you have an e-gear car, where the e-gear fluid goes, and if you have a manual car, where does the clutch hydraulic slave cylinder uh, fluid go, everything like that. So be sure to check out that video if you have any sort of confusion regarding any of those systems. So there are three main bolts when it comes to filling, checking the level, and draining this transmission. The first one is located on the top of the transmission, and this is going to be the primary method in which you would want to fill the transmission ideally. So if you look on the top of the transmission, you can see the little nipple for the clutch hydraulic slave cylinder bleed valve. And then to the right of that, there's a bolt with a 22 millimeter head. And ideally, you'd want to undo that bolt to fill the transmission. But in my case, and most likely in yours, is going to be obstructed by things. Like in my case, it's obstructed by the um, misfire tubes and the secondary air injection pipes, which are very fragile the older they get. So I'm not even going to touch that, and I'm going to show you how to fill the transmission and check the level through the status level indicating port. First off, I recommend jacking up the car using a low profile jack on the beam that runs transverse to the length of the car right underneath the transmission. And we're going to use a set of flat top jack stands. I'm going to link these in the description for you so you can get a good idea on what to get. But I really can't recommend that you use a set of um, jack stands designed for pinch welds because this will cause stress concentrations on the aluminum monocoque that this car is designed for. So I really can't recommend this and it might damage your car. So looking underneath the car, we're going to find our status level indicating port. And since we're going to have a hard time uh, filling from the top, I'm going to recommend that we fill from this port. And you can find this because it's located right underneath the right rear axle. So you look for the right rear axle and then you'll find this bolt. It's a 22 millimeter bolt and uh, we're going to take that off first. Next we're going to find the main drain port and if you look underneath the license plate, underneath the diffuser, this is the transmission, this is the crossbar that you used to jack it up, this port right here. So this is held in with an H14 hex and this is the main drain port for the transmission differential. And once that's loose we can let it drain. There we go. I actually got it all into the pan this time. That's that's a first. And this drain port is magnetic, so you might find a little bit of uh, metal shavings on it. And there's also a copper crush washer that you're going to want to replace. I'll link all the crush washers that you need in the description below. So next, on the left side of the transmission, there's a plastic piece that's actually the filter. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take this bolt off and then it slides out. In my case, I have a, uh, the carbon diffuser on the Superleggera, so I might have to actually unbolt it right here and then that will allow me to gain access to, uh, to get this filter out. But if you have a base Gyarados, you can pull this right out. Now that we have that out, we can uh, go ahead and clean it. I'm probably just going to clean this in the sink. Mine's perfectly clean almost, so might just give this a little rinse and make sure there's no particulates in there. So since we only jacked up the rear of the car, the car is at an angle, so that means that there's a little bit of transmission fluid left in the car. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to lower it down to the point where it hits my oil pan. And if you have a lower profile oil pan, you might be able to do this whole procedure without even jacking up the car whatsoever. And then once it's done draining, you jack up the car enough to where you can get the oil pan out. Then we can lower it all the way to the ground. Then we can go ahead and install that fastener back into the drain port. 
if I can do it with one hand, that is. There it is. And while a torque spec doesn't exist for this one, at least I can't find it, so I'm going to recommend tightening it down to a torque of 40 foot-pounds with the new crush washer. So before you install the filter, I recommend getting a little bit of gear oil and putting it on this O-ring. It'll assist in uh, installation. And we can go ahead and install the filter. Come on, there we go. And then installing the fastener back on. Then you're going to want to get your beer bong. And I know you have one, so don't even try to deny it. And you're going to want to fish it into the status level indicating port that we undid previously. And this one has a half inch outer diameter on the hose. Um, not really good for chugging, but it, it does the job, you know. So now that the beer bong is installed and we're ready to go, we can start filling it up. And this takes four liters. So about five liters of fluid. And then when I put the fifth liter into the car, I'm going to look on the side of the transmission underneath the fluid level indicating port to see if the fluid is coming out in a steady stream out of the transmission. And even when I remove the uh, beer bong, I'll look to see if that steady stream continues. And if it does, that's a good indication to me that the uh, transmission is full. And I'm going to wait for it to dry up. And then we can put the plug back in. So once you take your beer bong out and the fluid stops dribbling from this port, um, you're going to want to clean up the gigantic mess that you make underneath. And then you can finally go ahead and torque this uh, fastener down to uh, 40 foot-pounds. That's it. So I hope this cleared up a lot of confusion for you, and I hope it made this procedure a lot easier for you to do at home. So if this video helped you, please consider giving it a like. And until next time, thanks.